Hello, TYT Sports. Hello, YouTube fans. It is I, Josh Gibbs, Josh Poino, Josh C137, whatever you want to call me, here for another fabulous YouTube video uh, presented by TYT Sports, where we are talking about the fallout and future of the WWE now that No Mercy is in the books. And that's why we wanted to put this on YouTube, is because we wanted this to be a discussion. Obviously, I'm going to go over my notes, what I think uh, as the results of these matches at No Mercy, what they're going to lead to for the next pay per view, uh, the Raw pay per view TLC, but really what that means as we go on down the line as we get uh, the joint pay-per-views and and all these things as we start to build uh, towards Survivor Series and things like that what is this all gonna mean so we're just gonna dive right in we're gonna go through each match uh, we're gonna have the accompanying video on that side and then and we'll talk about it and then I want you guys to comment below and tell me what you think and then we'll just have a great discussion about it as we always do so uh, let's uh, jump right in with the biggest match of the night and that was our Brock Lesnar versus Braun Strowman match uh, Brock Lesnar was the victor in this match so what does that ultimately mean um, I think the ending seemed a little rushed I mean at the end Braun Strowman was felled by a single F5 uh, yeah he did go to Suplex City quite a few times but still it seemed like a rushed ending for such a big match um, I think, I mean, Lesnar kicked out of Strowman's running power slam quite a few times. So the fact that, you know, his finisher was enough to take him out, but Lesnar's able to take down Braun Strowman with just one F5 seemed a little odd. Seeming, But, you know, it, it, it is what it is. I think it made Strowman look both strong and weak at the same time. But it, it's, it didn't do anything to hurt his character by any means. So Braun Strowman is still incredibly over with the fans. So there's nothing we have to worry about in that regard. Uh, I think the next question is going to be, will Brock Lesnar be at TLC, which is the next Raw pay-per-view on October 22nd? Uh, how, is, uh, Strom how are they going to write Strowman into that? Because he definitely has to be there. So are we going to get Braun Strowman versus Samoa Joe or maybe something else? I don't even know if we're going to see Brock Lesnar at TLC. What do you guys think? Do you think he'll actually be there or do you think they're going to start, they're going to save him since we've seen a lot of Brock Lesnar, a lot more than we're used to seeing him. So is this the point when Brock Lesnar is going to kind of take a little bit of time off, uh, especially after Raw where Braun Strowman just kind of went crazy and went on this rampage and beat up everybody and uh, we definitely didn't see any of Brock Lesnar. So this might be the time when we have a little bit of a hiatus anyway uh, as far as Brock Lesnar is concerned. Uh, uh, so what well, remains to be seen we'll, we'll see that in the coming weeks we've still got a couple of weeks until TLC so there's plenty of time for them to build up whatever storyline they want to build and get both guys into different stories uh, next moving on Roman Reigns and John Cena uh, this was the other big match of the night how are they going to get one guy over the other guy and who was essentially who was going to be given the keys to these kingdoms uh, I thought it was going to be Roman Reigns and it was Roman Reigns was victorious over John Cena and it was a clean victory over Cena uh, which surprised a lot of people there were a lot of big spots a lot of near falls overall it was a great match uh, and then Cena raised Roman Reigns' arm at the end of it, uh, you know, sort of uh, almost like a proverbial passing of the torch with it. And like you just saw, I mean, Roman Reigns kicked out of the attitude adjustment. So, and there were a lot of those, and it really surprised the crowd that that's the, the that that happens so many times. Um, I think John Cena has kind of talked about, you know, retiring, not retiring. He's not retiring. Is he taking some time off to shoot movies and do other things? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I mean, he's 40 years old. The physical toll is really taking its toll. It's taking out on him. So, yeah, expect John Cena to be away from the ring for a little bit here and there. He's not a, a, a young buck anymore. So that and that's not a problem. And it's he's. There are plenty of other superstars who can stand in and do this, and, and then we'll, he'll be welcomed back anytime he wants to come back and does and has his matches here and there, and that's totally fine. Reigns is going to start moving to Lesnar. I've been telling you guys it's going to be Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. He started talking about it a little bit on Raw. He said, I'm focused on the Universal title now. But as we'll get to some other matches here a little later, uh, I think there might be at least some pauses in between that. But we definitely know that Roman Reigns now has his sights set on Brock Lesnar since he was successful against John Cena. And and it shows a lot of faith and confidence from John Cena into Roman Reigns that, that uh, this was the result of the match. So we should all be pretty happy with the way things are going. I think Roman Reigns is a great wrestler. Yeah, does he need to work on other things like mic skills and stuff? Yeah, but comparing him to somebody like John Cena is not fair, especially in that regard. Uh, Finn Balor and Bray Wyatt, I'm afraid what we're going to get out of this match, uh, Finn Balor was the victor. This marks the second time he's beaten Bray Wyatt. I fear we're going to get Balor versus Wyatt 3 at TLC, simply because the WWE doesn't know what to do with these guys. Um, Wyatt was jobbed out yet again, and, and ever since he went, he lost the WWE title several months ago, uh, it's 
he, he's really been on this downward swing. And, I mean, at one point, Bray Wyatt was one of the biggest things that WWE had going. And ever since the Wyatt family disbanded, yeah, he had a, a, a world title reign, but it was very, very short. And now he's just been kind of relegated to this other role and, and trying to build up Finn Balor and, and make people uh, reminded of why he was a fantastic singles wrestler. I mean, Finn Balor was the first universal champion, and then unfortunately he had to relinquish it due to injury. So because wrestling fans have such short memories, we have to build this back up and remind people that Finn Balor, yes, he should be in this title picture. And Bray Wyatt is apparently the guy who's going to keep doing that yet again. So I think we might get a third version of their match uh, at the next pay-per-view. Uh, the tag team titles did not change hands. Uh, Rollins and Ambrose retained their titles as I predicted they would. They got together so quickly they weren't going to lose the titles so quickly after getting back together. Uh, now the story that they may be telling is the Shield might be coming back together. We saw that starting to come to fruition on Raw with the Miz Taraj making fun of Roman Reigns, beating him down, doing the fist bump over him. And now that Rollins and Ambrose have retained their tag titles, which means that their team kind of stays intact, even if at times it's a little tumultuous, they are still together as a tag team. So that means that we are going to get some more life coming out of these two guys. And it looks like it's going to mean a run as the Shield. What this might mean for Sheamus and Cesaro is that another tag team steps in to, to take the place of this feud so that Rollins and Ambrose can focus on a possible Shield reunion with Roman Reigns, and now Sheamus and Cesaro can take over the reins against somebody else. The, no pun intended. Uh, well, what do you, who do you guys think they should face? What tag team do you think should be given the bump uh, against these guys? Uh, maybe Anderson and Gallows. It, it's I mean, there's a couple of tag teams that could step into this feud and could benefit from it. So I think having having these guys uh, separate from each other and bringing in some some fresh faces in there and developing something new uh, with Sheamus and Cesaro can definitely do wonders for them. If, if anything else, then just to give us something different. Um, Cesaro also had a pair of teeth knocked out in that match. So hey, don't try this at home, kids. And that's exactly what they mean because you could possibly lose some teeth. So. It, that was a, a nice surprising part of this match. Uh, this women's match was actually pretty fantastic. This bump you're about to see that Nia Jax took on the outside of the ring, uh, I think was fantastic. Alexa Bliss uh, retained her women's championship. Uh, I think uh, Nia Jax actually got the loudest pop of the night. I thought this was the night she would win the women's title, but uh, it looks as if they may uh, push that off at least until the next pay-per-view. I'm hoping that TLC is where Nia Jax officially becomes the women's champion. She got one of the, the biggest crowd reactions here. People are really in love with what she's doing, and they see her, I think, as the heir apparent to the women's championship. So that's exactly what, what I'd like to see. Uh, whether or not they do a horsewomen feud with the women of MMA, all that is just rumor and speculation at this point. It remains to be seen if that is something that they're going to do. So we, we don't want to dive too much into that because that's all it is at this point. There's no nothing legitimate about that. The biggest thing for the women on the horizon is Asuka's arrival in October. So we have yet to see where that's going. Uh, this was a big surprise for the evening, is that Enzo Amore won the Intercontinental Belt away uh, from Neville. Uh, but what it did provide was a great character shift, is because now Enzo Amore is firmly a heel and Neville is a face. So I'm, I'm excited to see what Neville can do now that he has the Intercontinental Belt. And he's going to be so annoying and just so unbelievably relenting in that. He's already started on Raw where he was trashing the entire Cruiserweight division and Neville kind of became the savior of that. So I think this is going to keep the momentum going, not just for the Cruiserweights on Raw, but for 205 Live. They've been looking for ways to increase the ratings. So you could argue that just doing a belt change that was this surprising is, is kind of a shrewd move in that direction. But I'm fine with that because these guys really do deserve a little bit more attention. The Cruiserweights are criminally underrated when how talented they are. So anything that can bring a little bit more justice to the stuff that they do is absolutely warranted. And even if it has to come at the expense of bringing in somebody like Enzo Amore, who doesn't hold a candle in regards to talent, as far as anybody else in the Cruiserweight division is concerned, much less the entire WWE. But at least this is bringing some good attention to the Cruiserweights and then to 205 Live by extension. Uh, so uh, how that's going to play out until TLC, will he hold the belt that long? The, the Cruiserweight Championship is something I could see them changing hands on television. So it remains to be seen how long Enzo can actually hold on to this belt. And, and I guess the crowd reaction and, and how positive or negative that is will definitely play a part in, in whether or not that is a long reign or a short reign. And then uh, Jason Jordan, who was unsuccessful in his attempt to get the Intercontinental Championship away from The Miz. 
uh, but it did allow the Miz to uh, to begin this feud of the Miz Taraj versus the Shield, possibly. Uh, Jason Jordan was kind of was booed after the match, even though he was called for a rematch. Uh, I don't think it's because he's any less talented or anything like that. I think it's just nobody in the WWE is buying the whole thing of him being Kurt Angle's son. So everyone is just kind of, you know what, man, I'm, I'm not buying this feud. I'm done with it. I don't really care about it. So whether or not uh, that's going to affect his storyline with The Miz, we'll, we'll just have to see. Uh, I mean, obviously Jordan is not done with his feud against The Miz. He still wants to continue. And that may be something he can do to keep The Miz in singles competition until they figure out exactly how to write in uh, this Miz Taraj versus Shield reunion because that is going to take a little bit of time to build that up, uh, especially on the side of getting Rollins and Ambrose out of their tag team feuds and then reuniting somehow with Roman Reigns. It can be done pretty easily. It just hasn't been done yet. So this this whole thing we keep talking about as far as the Shield reuniting, it's not, it's not been confirmed, although there have been strong allusions to it happening. Uh, we just haven't seen anything formal yet. Uh, but Jason Jordan had a good showing, and so he's definitely he's definitely got potential for other big matches. But I don't think that that his feud against The Miz is going to be one that has a longevity to it. it. There's no reason to continue it too long. So, uh, so that was it. Those were the matches that we had for No Mercy. Uh, the, this next video here is just a kind of a top ten uh, that it went over that the WWE posted of, of the biggest hits. So uh, what did you guys think of No Mercy, of the pay-per-view itself? Did you think it was good? Did you think it was bad? Uh, TLC, the next pay-per-view coming out, like we said, on October 22nd, should be a lot of fun. TLC has traditionally been uh, a sort of a, a, a devil-may-care attitude uh, pay-per-view because you get these, these great matches, sort of like Hell in the Cell is for SmackDown, where you expect really big bumps. You expect really crazy things to happen, and that's what we expect uh, as we roll in uh, to something like not just Hell in the Cell, but also to TLC. So uh, now that we have some of these matches already set, we have some rematches that are going to take place. We've got some challenges that are already coming on Raw uh, for TLC. Hopefully we'll get some entertaining matches out of those, and we'll just keep on down the line until WrestleMania, uh, especially up until Survivor Series, till we get the next joint pay-per-view where both Raw and SmackDown uh, can face each other. So whether we're, how we're going to get those matches integrated against each other remains to be seen, but that's always kind of the fun as we get uh, deeper and deeper onto the road to WrestleMania is how they tell those stories, how they integrate Raw and SmackDown together so that ultimately they can meet up at the biggest show of the year, the granddaddy of them all, WrestleMania, in April of next year. So that's all we got. Uh, we got my little uh, Twitter things here at TYT Sports or at Chief Josh Yola. Throw me any comments, questions you want. That's why we love this YouTube thing. You can throw all your comments down below this video. We can talk about everything that happened, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Everybody can have a good time and uh, we'll be able to listen and respond to everything right as you know if you've commented or watched these before you know I jump into the comments and I love interacting back and forth with people if you take the time to watch this video then and comment on it I can take the time to comment back so thank you all very much for listening uh, my name is Josh Gibbs this has been uh, another edition of the WWE presented by TYT Sports thank you all so much we'll talk to you guys soon bye bye